Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. Recently I installed 220 in my shop and one of the unique things about my setup is that I have a fuse box and not a breaker box. Now basically everywhere that I was finding online said the recommendation was replace the fuse box before you do anything. Um, and I would normally have done that except I'm in a situation where I can't really replace it. Just a lot of things to go into. But you can still do 220 in a fuse box um, you just have to know the fundamentals. So I kind of wanted to explain to you guys what I found as I was doing my research on this so that if you're looking at a similar situation or you just want to understand your fuse box a little bit better or power in general, this should be really helpful for you. All right, let's get going. Actually, before we get going in full, I wanted to give the caveat as usual when working with electrical work that I am not a certified electrician and if you are nervous about doing electrical work in any way, shape or form, I highly recommend you get an electrician, nor do I recommend anything that I'm doing in this video. This is pure purely an explanatory video on what you're seeing inside of your fuse box. All right, here let's actually go. Alrighty, so here's a picture of the fuse box that I have out near my shop and there's a couple of features that I wanted to point out. First is gonna be the two hot leads coming into the box and the ground. These are what power and ground out the entire box. Next, we have a couple of fuses. We've got the main fuse, the range fuse, and four working fuses down here. Now, the main fuse was set to about 60 amps on each leg for me, and the range fuse was set at the same, though usually you're gonna find they're a little bit lower in the setup from what I was seeing. Something you'll likely find in all panels as well is going to be one of these diagrams, and these diagrams are really useful for figuring out how things are wired behind what you're seeing here. So what you're seeing in this diagram are the two hots coming in, one with solid black and one is the hatched. Each one of these go through one of the two main fuses that you see in the main fuse block. After the main fuse block, you can see that the black hot wire powers both the number one working fuse and the number four working fuse, and that is connected by this dotted line in the background. Meanwhile, you can see that the hatched hot line powers number two and number three working fuses with this hatched line in the background here. The range block is connected in the back directly to the mains, each one of the fuses powered by one of the other fuses. In mine it looks like the black on the range is powered by the hatch on the main fuse block and the hatch on the range is powered by the black on the main fuse block. So in order to wire 220 from this fuse box, I need my two hot legs for the 220 to hit both of the hot legs coming into the box, which either means that I can just use the range fuse, which is the preferable method, or I can use two of the working fuses down below. Part of the challenge in using the range block for my 220 is that I was sizing my lines to be 20 amps, which means that I would ideally have a 20 amp on each one of my legs. But the range block was sized for the larger fuse blocks, which are 60 amps, and you can buy an adapter, but I was looking at spending 10, 20, 30 dollars to try and get the adapters for each one of these different pieces. So instead what I decided to use is use working fuses three and four to power the 220 for my wall. These were going to the other side of the shop, which is not used all that often, but if there is a case where the other side of the shop is being used, I will probably not be able to use my 220 without tripping one of the two breakers here. And I say breakers specifically because I replaced the fuses for Edison style breakers. Now another thing that I should point out about this fuse panel is that there is a way to hook directly to the main breakers so that you get 60 amps on either leg. You have to make sure that your wiring is appropriate for that through the rest of your shop and because I was only going to be doing 20 amps on each leg I didn't consider this. But if you have a welder that you're looking to hook up this may be an option. Alrighty then, thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Again, I am not a certified electrician, so please do not take any of this as advice. I more than anything just wanted to share some of the information that I've learned so that maybe you have a little bit better context for what you are seeing in your fuse box. If you have any questions, please contact a certified electrician and they will help you get set up the right way. Alrighty, thanks again. Talk to you guys later. Bye.